Two more panelists are here from. First of all, Martin Short, the CEO of Power of Nutrition. Well, welcome. Um, now, here's a revelation. I used to be a bodybuilder in my youth. Okay. And, uh, you know, I would sometimes wonder why sometimes my gains were plateauing. Because, you know, you get big, you get quite strong. And then you think to yourself, why am I not getting any bigger and stronger? And people in the gym say, well, you need to take anabolic steroids and so on. I said, no, no, no. I don't want to become Arnold Schwarzenegger. I want to do it the right way. You do understand? And people said, well, how, how? <laughs> well, you know, Arnold. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how. So um, people would say, well, how much are you sleeping? Um, are you taking enough liquid? But then one guy said, what about your nutrition? Because nutrition, more than anything else, more than the size of the weights you lift or how much you sleep, is actually the key. They say it's worth about 70%. You know, it's worth far more than perspiration. It's nutrition. So I'm delighted that you are here. And the title of your organization is The Power of Nutrition. I bought into it 25 years ago. So, 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 so talk to us a little bit about the impact your organization's investment in Ethiopia is having and what more needs to be done to achieve impact at scale? Because we've heard about some really, really good examples, but the elephant in the room in all these discussions is scale, because we're talking about hundreds of millions of people. Ethiopia's population already, 100 million people, and rising by what, 2 million a year, something like that? More, 2.5, Lord Jesus. Okay, <laughs> over to you. Well, thank you very much um, um, for that. Um, a statement and um, uh, um, and a question, and uh, um, and I think you used a very a very interesting word, and that word was investment, and uh, as opposed to grants or anything we think is around moral imperative. And I think that just because we are in philanthropy, I don't think that you should discard uh, the principles of business and the laws of economics. I think that in fact, actually, you should think through it very much through on an investment case. So. Power Nutrition did make an investment in Ethiopia in 2017 and with the World Bank for $40 million. And um, we, we are thinking through that in terms of the, the, the systems. We're thinking through that in terms of the capacity building and the system strengthening so that you can deliver these supplementations and the behavior change uh, at scale uh, to, those, to those people at, at, with the greatest need. And if you look what they've done already in regards to... Um, uh, the uptake of uh, iron and folic acid. They have been and, and, and surpassed the very high targets that were set and actually have done extremely well in terms of the vitamin A targets at the same time as well. So I think all congratulations to them. Um, and I think congratulations to them as well for actually being brave enough um, to, to make a significant uh, declaration by 2030. Um, investing in human capital uh, can be uh, a, a very tough decision when you've got limited resources because there are a lot of uh, other opportunities, whether it be power and infrastructure, whether it be uh, agriculture, uh, whether it be education, um, that can often um, turn you away from doing those things and you can leave that to somebody else to do. And, and a lot of countries outsource their, their health system perhaps to, um, um, to the international community and then they very much focus on, on other activities. So, so I do congratulate um, um, Ethiopia on that. Um, and I think, uh, as well, I, I, when, when the power nutrition looks through um, uh, you know, the, the stunting areas, we always talk about the 149 million children in the world under five who are stunted. But my question to a lot of governments is, is, is what do you think your adult stunted population is that is currently in the workforce, and what impact does that have uh, on GDP? Because it's not just a GDP issue, it is, it is the equity value of your SMEs and your international business organizations that are going to invest in Ethiopia. Now, I don't know what the adult stunted population of Africa is, but I would guess that it's probably in excess of 250 million and probably over 300 million. So if you think of that in terms of what is the impact on the absenteeism rates, the, the non-communicable diseases, the health systems, the burden that you have, um, the intellectual capacity to hold down difficult jobs. I think that's a really important question to, our, to ask. And, and, and if you can and do eliminate stunting in Ethiopia by 2030 and indeed reduce that high burden um, delivered through um, the high incidence of low birth weight, 
I think that's going to have a significant impact on the economy of the country. Now, Martin, um, before we came into this room, you and I had a little chat just by the cafe there, and you were talking about the convening power of the private sector. Talk to me a little bit about that, and you can include the very exciting news about an agreement you've just made this week here at Unger with Unilever. Please tell us. One of the, I mean, the Power Nutrition is a, is a charitable foundation based in the UK. Um, one of the things that we do not do is we do not implement. So we will work through and try to help others um, with their existing infrastructure to try to improve that model rather than try to replicate something and think that we can do it better than somebody else, like, say, the children, for example. We'd much rather work through them as we are indeed doing so um, in, uh, in, in our programs in Indonesia. Um, so we do convene. I mean, that's one of, I think, the strengths of the power of nutrition and getting people, I mean, we, we've already mentioned partnership and collaboration, the two words that are mentioned more often uh, in philanthropy and done less in philanthropy than anything else I've ever heard. Um, and the reason why is because it's extremely difficult to do cooperation and partnership because it means compromise and it means um, in basically equality. And those things are very uh, things are very dear to people. They don't like giving those up. So in this $40 million that we brought to the table in Ethiopia, we have the Children's Investment Fund Foundation. We have Margaret A. Cargill. We have the UK government. We have Enlif from Canada. We have the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And bringing all those together under one program and getting a single objective to do that is by no means easy at all, but it is hugely gratifying when it actually gets done. And that's important because you do things at scale that we've mentioned before. Also, what you do is you defragment the marketplace because the, one of the things that I do find about philanthropy, which is incredibly irritating, um, is this romantic hobbies that tend to go on in a deconstructed marketplace. And if you thought of, of what would have happened to our program if you'd had those five individuals doing their own thing around Ethiopia, you wouldn't nearly have anywhere near the impact that you have by doing this together. So the role of the private sector, you mentioned Unilever yesterday. Um, I, um, myself and Alan Jope, the, the, the CEO of, of, uh, of Unilever, um, um, announced a strategic partnership with a hand washing with soap activities through their Lifebuoy product um, in India and beyond. Um, one of the critical um, interventions that the power nutrition have is hand washing with soap. Um, there is no way that the power of nutrition will ever make hand washing with soap an aspirational activity there is every opportunity for someone like Unilever to do it. And I would love to sit here next year and say the power nutrition has no longer got 11 interventions. We have now 10 interventions because we've outsourced um, hand washing with soap to the private sector. So private sector engagement, will be, I think, is incredibly critical to getting in. If you use the skills uh, and, the, um, and the experience of the private sector and the money that they have, it is going to be a very, very powerful way to actually make soap an aspirational product to buy, and through messaging and telephony uh, and reach, I think that's going to be something that's going to be uh, um, done far better in collaboration with the private sector rather than us trying to do it alone. Martin Short from Power of Nutrition, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. My question to the panel is, you know, what do you need from the partners in this room and elsewhere? Financing for sure, but what else? Where are your gaps, and you know how can we all better help you? Martin, anything to conclude? Any, any final thought? I think it's really important to think and differentiate between what is the role of government and what is the role of the private sector. Uh, and and I think it really is the government. I mean, somebody said here that that the Ethiopia was a federation, um, you know, a fleet of ships as opposed to one ship. And I think those things can be. Uh, hampering in terms of how you get investment into a country. The role of government is not to create jobs. That is the role of the private sector. The role of government is to provide the enabling environment that jobs can be created. That is the land rights, rule of law, uh, etc. And that is the way that you are going to lift, lift, uh, lift uh, um, uh, the economy um, 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 up. And that is where you're going to uh, get foreign exchange reserves. That's where you're going to um, encourage private investment from outside. Mm -hmm.